The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Right control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. Hi, murderers. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Tout le monde haïtien, comme yé. God save the queen. Broadcasting live from ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas, welcome once again to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a Justice of the Peace here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And of course, I'm a member of the local Christian Catholic community. It is a sad day throughout the family of islands. Island luck owners have made a fundamental decision to reinsure that Mama and Papa them will not be able to get any little money from Nassau from their children them. This comes about after the minister responsible for gamings made certain suggestion in which a, a smart island luck management decided their, their facilities was never intended for money transfer and therefore they shall ensure that it will not happen. Thousands of Bahamians around the Bahama Islands are in shock because the banking facilities throughout these islands seems to be deteriorating. I don't know how Mama and them will get their little stipend from their children here in Nassau. Meanwhile, the government post office saving bank where one could in recent time make deposits to get to the family island, well, you know, they are in trouble. So I don't know what is taking place here on the island. And of course, it looks like I'm going to have the time myself from my watch because my clock is not working. Anyway, um, I have with me for the first 18 minutes Ross De Nero Thompson. Ross, how are you? Mr. Marker, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here on Freedom March on ILTV. Thank you so much for having me. Well, he's going to be with me for the next 18 minutes. And of course, I hope to be joined by my spiritual advisor, Bradley Rule. But I'm certain by now you would have seen some of the reports in the newspapers. For instance, I'm looking at the Bahama Journal, which has a powerful headline declaring that Works Minister Desmond Bannister has apologized to the leader of Her Majesty's opposition in this country. Fellow Brave Davis, you are the leader of the opposition in this country. So there are many things that I have to tell you about. And of course, you would be aware that the late former member of parliament for Fort Finn Castle, Calvin Johnson, was buried today. And of course, I wondered if Dr. Minnis attended the funeral. Because these days, I don't understand Dr. Minnis. But we shall look at all of that this afternoon. So I welcome all of the people down who are joining me here on 
freedom mind. So, my spiritual, goodness me, <laughs> I almost <laughs> elevated you to my spiritual advisor. Are you saying? Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. I welcome all the people them around the world. Rastin Arrow Thompson is my special guest. My name is Rodney Monka. Ross, could you kindly lead us in the reading of Holy Scriptures? Most certainly. Scripture verse is taken from Genesis 28, verses 11 through 18. When he had reached a certain place, he stopped there for the night, since the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he made it his pillow and lay down where he was. He had a dream. There was a ladder planted on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and God's angels were going up and down on it. And there was Yahweh standing beside him and saying, I, Yahweh, am the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The ground on which you are lying I shall give to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be plentiful as the dust on the ground. You will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all clans on earth will bless themselves by you and your descendants. Be sure I am with you. I shall keep you safe wherever you go and bring you back to this country. For I shall never desert you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Truly, Yahweh is in this place, and I did not know. He was afraid and said, How awe-inspiring is this place? This is nothing less than the abode of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Early next morning, Jacob took the stone he had used for his pillow and set it up as a pillar, pouring oil over the top of it. This ends the scripture reading. I thank you, Rastanero Thompson. Well, folks, you should have heard by now, particularly Bahamians living throughout the family of islands in which island luck they run their business well the tribune business news tells us today that island luck is to close all money transfer accounts now notwithstanding that i am employed by a company of island luck i have not been able to contact management. Isn't that amusing? <laughs> For a comment. Listen, management, ignore the fact that I work for one of your companies. I'm supposed to be able to contact management for a <laughs> for comments. That is true. But I shall not complain because praise the Lord, the Tribune has the story. The story is written by a member of the local congregation in which I attend, Brother Notario McKenzie. And since he is a brother of mine in the church, I have no doubt that his report is competent and efficient. So I shall read it as Idan Luck reveals that it never intended to offer service, only gaming allow after concerns, the chief financial officer acknowledges Oat Island impact. A major web shop yesterday said all customers' account being used for money transmission will be closed following regu regulatory concerns expressed by the gaming minister, Dirk Simmons. Island's Luck Chief Financial Officer said the web shop had acted on its own initiative. We do not offer a money transfer service. We never intended to offer a money transfer service. And we do not intend to offer 
the service. This is something that happened organically due to the robustness of our systems, said Mr. Simmons. His comments come just weeks after the Anuncio de Aguilar, who has ministerial responsibility <laughs> for gaming, suggested that the Bahamas could again be blacklisted through web shops acting as unregulated money transfer businesses. Mr. Diagula also questioned the web shop industries know your customer, KYC. Scrutiny suggesting that while they verify clients' identities and addresses, they did not assess their source of income. Mr. Simmons reiterated, this was purely a proactive decision to align our business offerings with the highest interpretation of the laws that govern our licenses. Over the past several years, we were shutting down accounts actively every month. We are now taking a more proactive approach every month. We have now applied systems. Well, just bear with me. We are now taking a more proactive approach every month. We have now applied system changes to accomplish the desired effect of having our system used only for gaming purposes. Going forward, persons will be required to use their island luck cards to both deposit and withdraw funds. Mr. Simmons acknowledged that island luck's move may cause hardship for fi family island-based businesses and residents who have begun to increasingly use web shops to conduct their regular financial services transactions as commercial banks exit their island. We fully appreciate that this decision may impact Bahamians on our remote family islands who do not have access to any commercial banking services and may rely on our system to facilitate basic day-to-day -day commerce to meet their needs, Mr. Simmons said. However, we are making this proactive decision to align ourselves with the highest interpretation of the regulatory laws and requirements that govern our license. Mr. Simmons added, we at all times stand ready to assess the government in any way we can, and we remain open and active in dialogue with the regulatory bodies to find solutions that may be impacted by those decisions. While Mr. Simmons did not disclose what those solutions might be, the Tribune Business has previously reported that the central bank earlier this year introduced the Payment Instrument Oversight Regulations 2017, which are designed as the supervisory framework for electronic payments, solutions, and providers. Island Lock's chief executive, Sabats Bastian, <laughs> had previously expressed interest in obtaining a license under this regime. Very interesting, Mr. Monk, huh? Indeed, it is. It is a very unfortunate exercise that Island Luck has taken an initiative to ensure that there be no further money transfer through the various patrons' accounts. We appreciate the reason 
because we are living in a society where strange things have taken place. But those of us who wish to be honest and objective know that island like luck is similar to the Royal Bank of Canada. It is similar to the Bank of the Bahamas. It is similar to Scotia Bank. It is similar to First Caribbean International Bank where they have the identical protocol to know your customer. But I think their only problems might be that these are black businessmen. And you know in the country, we don't like black people, no matter how black we are. In fact, the blacker we are, the more we hate black people. And the blacker they are, the more we hate them. So that is what is taking place. But I ask the government to look at this issue objectively because we are seeing quite a number of the international banks closing down and exiting the country. Now once that happened, are we going back to the 1950s and the 1960s when Sir Roland would return to the current island and we would say to Sir Roland, Brent Simon and Daddy, listen Sir Roland, I got this two pound. You think he could take it to Nassau and make sure Titty Sarah get the money? <laughs> or are we returning to the late 40s, 50s, and 60s when Basil Kelly was the MP for Acklands and Crooked Island? And then we could say to Basil, um, Bola, when you go to Nassau, you think you could take this 100 pound down there and take it to the businessman and send down them bag of flour, them box of salt pork, and them bucket of lard. Wow. <laughs> Are we going to go back to that? Because certainly in them days, there was no regulatory agency taking place. Are we going to return to that? Or will the FNM come up? With a, with a scientific means by which family island residents could send their money to Nassau or how those of us who have relatives in the family island, we will be able to send money to them because don't forget what is taking place. The banks, them, are slowly closing down. That is true, Mr. And Marker. Mama got to get the money. Uh -huh. And we can get it to her either by lawful means or hook and or crook. Why? Because the government is not proactive. The government is not looking at the economic necessity to ensure that the Bank of the Bahamas, therefore, will establish branches all over the Bahamas so we can do business. Not because we are black, mean that all of us are crooks. And certainly not because the conky Joes may have had a history in piracy and in money laundering many years ago, that don't mean that this generation of conky Joes are not law abiding. But this is what we are faced with when there are no one in place in government who wants to empower the masses, who want to empower the average man to make money. They don't want us to make no money because once we are able to make what I call, quote, independent money, money that the politician can't help us to make, they get angry because once you got a couple dollars in your pocket, you could flex your muscle. You could tell them what to kiss or suck. If I had money, I would tell the government to suck my big toe. <laughs> <laughs> would, come on. You can't say that, man. How do you mean? You can't say that. Or I could say to the government, listen, suck my foot. I could say it to them. All right? But if they can keep us poor, half poor, broke, half broke, they think they will be able to rule us. But I'm going to tell you all, that there will come a day in the history of the country 
when our people will find means to create industry through science and every other kind of scientific methods and make money. And when we make some money, one of the first persons I'd like to kick is a certain FNM. And I'd like to kick him on his big toe. And after I kick him on his big toe, I would hope that he buck his big toe and catch Tingham. So that's what's going on here in the country. Lord, forgive me for saying that I want people to suck my big toe. Because that might be a sin. Yeah, I think it is a sin, Mr. Monger. You think it's a sin? It's a sin. Well, I think it's better that I ask them to suck my big toe. Oh, boy. I got to put up with all kinds of things. Wow. So what do you think about this new announcement, Ross De Niro, Kyle Thompson? Uh, Mr. Monger, in my personal dealings, I've used Island Lux um, inter-island money transfer with family, with friends, and I think... Um, really? It's going to be difficult to send money. You know, my daddy live in Exuma. He's asked for minutes for his cell phone, so I sent him the $20, so it's going to be difficult You're to send You're not sending them. minutes No, 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 sending money for the minutes. Don't get even problem, because <laughs> if the government here, that they are transferring minutes <laughs> through their accounts, they could be in trouble. And Mr. Monk, as you said, on these family islands, the banks are closing down. For example, North of Luther, there's only one RBC in the Luther, and that's on Harbor Island. What so is RBC? What that sound for? Royal Bank of Canada. Yeah. Listen, they close in Nanto? No, I'm saying there's only one. So what about the person who gets his check in Gregory Town? Yeah. He needs to travel all the way up there, catch the ferry, go over to Harbor Island, catch his check, come back, cross the ferry, go drive back down to Gregory Town where he lives. Just yeah, because check. every Christmas, my daughter, using RBC in Harbor Island, is send me my lamb money. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Listen, your link could cost me not to get that lamb money. So, but, listen, I don't have an Island Luck account, but by grab, either you allow me one so my daughter could send me the Christmas lamb money, or Island Luck will have to buy my lamb. <laughs> I don't know. And for Christmas, not only do I want a lamb, I want a grouper. Wow. And my daughter, I just going to have to send that money on the mailboat. And I don't trust the people on the mailboat, even though I don't know them. But this is powerful indeed. I have to laugh at my Negro government because it appears that they are fussing up the nation. And I want them to know that they need to stop it because I can't take it. Island luck, how the people them can survive. Anyway, this is Freedom March. Thank you for having me, Mr. Monka. I gotta run. Hold Thank on, you so much for me. My spiritual advisor is in the house. Bradley, there are you. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monka. Praise the Lord. My spiritual advisor, Bradley Roll, is in the house. Bradley, welcome to Freedom March. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Give, Monka. Give your brother a salute. Yeah, what do, what do, what do you call it? It's a bump? It's a bump. <laughs> it's a bump. Thank you, Sen well, former Senator. Thank you so much. Folks, tonight, I have been invited by the Freetown branch of the Progressive Liberal Party to address that meeting. The meeting is scheduled to start at, C at 7 p.m. tonight on Camp Road. You know where the St. Margaret School 
is located? Well, it's going to be held there. I'm a guest speaker. I shall be talking. Let me see what I'm going to be talking about tonight. The inefficiencies and the incompetence of the new minister administration. And I shall be calling the people to organize peacefully, to march and to demonstrate. So I want the people of the Camp Road area to know that I shall be speaking there. And I'd be so happy if all the people in the eastern part of the island would come to that meeting. Because these are serious times, and in serious times, serious political decision must be made. I want to early do a couple of salutes, so that when I start, there'll be no need for further salute. I start off, I've met a wonderful, charming woman today from Abaco, Wynette. Parker. She lives in Fort Foxtown, Abaco, but she happens to be in Nassau. And my God, when the woman saw me, she immediately confessed that she was one of the woman then. And then she told me about her charming 15-year-old daughter, who she tells me is one of the teenagers then. April Parker. Listen. Your mom told me about you, and you are on the right track. Blessed are the young people who listen to Freedom March, because we have no axe to grind. We're going to tell you the truth, and when we discover that we are wrong, we shall come back and correct it. So I salute you. And then I receive an urgent call from a charming woman who lives in South Elutra. She told me about her mother, Mrs. T. Cell Wright. I have learned that you are one of the woman them. And I salute you. And let me tell you something. I'm coming down to Green Castle because after your daughter told me all those wonderful things about you, I'm going to have to catch the mail boat and come down to Elutra to meet all the woman them and all the people there. So that is powerful. I want to welcome the new Charge de Affaires of the United States of America. You have a photograph of the new Charge de Faire? This is a man Charge de Faire. Because Lisa Johnson, she apparently is going back home. You, as you will note, Lisa Johnson was named Charge d'Affaires by who? President Barack Obama. So Lisa's leaving. I've never met her formally. But Lisa, listen, I'm going to pray that one day God will touch your heart, hearts and you will become an evangelist. And you will preach the gospel for Jesus Christ. Lisa, take good care. I love you, but I wish that I did meet you. But who knows? The world is so small. Lisa, take good care, eh? I think you must have had a wonderful time among these Negroes. And as I told you, Lisa, these Negroes, they love white people. So, Lisa, they held you in high esteem. Lisa, take good care. And may God go with you. Now the new um, charge d'affaires is a heron. Let me see if I can find Mr. Heron's full name. Mr. Heron, listen, I want you to know that among the Negroes, I support Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is such a brilliant president. And you might not believe me. I sleep safely. I feel safe. And I sleep good these nights knowing that Donald Trump will defend the free world. And so, Mr. Heron, I welcome you to the Bahamas. And I hope that you will remain and act as the chief tourist until Papa comes. Okay? And I think you're a great man. And I always like to see man them running 
the United States Embassy. I can't find Mr. Heron's full name, but the charge d'affaires is Mr. Heron. And Mr. Heron, you should listen to Freedom March because here you will find the truth about the affairs of state in our nation. So that is what I'm saying. So for the people of Freetown, listen, I'm your special guest at the PLP branch meeting tonight at 7 p.m. St. Margaret's School, Camp Road. I'm coming there tonight if it is God's will because I have to talk to you all because what is taking place in the country is terrible. I don't know if you've seen the Nassau Guardian. The Nassau Guardian headline today is extremely interesting because from this headline, it would appear that the government must immediately appoint a red, bl blue ribbon commission of inquiry because there are red flags over the Royal Bahamas Defense Force weapons. You know that in the Bahamas, we have had a serious problem with attempting to trace where weapons are and how they are coming into the country. You might not remember this, but shortly after the formation of a Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and a police marine in the 70s, if I have it correctly. I'm getting old, but I think it was in the 70s. We began to have a series of criminal problems with people who were members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. You remember? Some of y'all was children. Some of y'all was born, wasn't born. Some of y'all forget we had members of the defense force who participated in a series of robberies listen you thought these people could rob good but the defense force them who was doing the robbery they were doing robberies with military precision man you hear me now the auditor general of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is making some serious claims. And so I'm going to look at some of the paragraph because the national security of the country could very well be threatened when a nation cannot give a scientific accounting of where the guns are where the bullets them is because suddenly it would appear that every Negro and Ebola seems to be well armed with guns and well bullet all right and so the story in the Nassau Guardian from the little that I've been able to comprehend is extremely depressing it's depressing and so I don't know what Marvin Deems can do because he is the what? The Minister of National Security. And as Minister of National Security, Marvin needs to do what National Security Ministers ought to do. I'm going to read The Guardian so that you, my people, could be aware of what is taking place, particularly those of you who are living in the family islands and might not have immediate access to the little news that is taking place in Nassau. So let's see what they say, okay? Auditor General, an Auditor General report into the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has found that the organization 2015 process of obtaining weapons and military items pose a threat to the safety and security of 
the Bahamian borders. The report said that a company contracted by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force to import weapons and other military items into the Bahamas did not have Hello. approval from the Commissioner of Police to import weapons. Lord Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Let me repeat it again. I want to show you black leadership on the march. I want to show you black leadership on display. How the heck you could import all them weapons and the commissioner police did not give any approval. Green Slate, you can't go to London yet. You're going to have to answer these allegations. Did you at any time receive a request from the Defense Force or a company purporting to act on their behalf to import weapons into the country? You see how those who are responsible for the national security of the country, my God, look what's going on. So we got that first allegation. The report said a company contracted by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force to import weapons and other military items into the Bahamas did not have from the Commission of Police um, permission to import weapons. The report also found that two entries of weapons shipments could not be found by the custom department. Lord, have mercy on my soul. Let me repeat it again. The report also found that two entries of weapons shipments could not be found by the custom department. It was tabled in the House of Assembly yesterday and covers the period between July 1st, 2013 and June 30, 30th, 2015. The report states that in November 2014, a vendor was awarded a $1.3 million contract <coughs> recommended by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and approved by the cabinet to procure weapons. Just bear with me because this may be the answer to how come all these gun stem are in the country and we don't know. This might. So I'm going to page 10 where it says weapons. No evidence company had police permission to order guns. Okay? So just bear with me. Let me go back to this front page. And it says to procure weapons and other military items. Nobody got permission from the Commissioner of Police. Auditor General Terence Bastian wrote that the company was a home-based businesses that was inactive between 2008 and 2013. He described the company as an online purchasing courier service and stated that its business license was never renewed that his business license was renewed. Let me repeat that again because I'm excited. Terence Bastian, the Auditor General of the Bahamas, said, and he described the company as an online purchasing courier service and stated that its business license was renewed for months, June 30, 2014, before receiving cabinet approval. He noted that a competing bidder, bidder from a U.S.-based military supplier previously used by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force had a quote that was only 17973 dollars and 48 cents more than the awarded contract. We further observe that there was no evidence to support this company, that's the home base business, having the requisite approval from the Commissioner of Police to import fire 
arms into the Bahamas for 2015. That is, no firearms approval letter was lodged with the business license unit. The report said, additionally, the customs department could only verify three of the 12 entries lodged in this company's name in their system of which two entries for shipments of weapons shipments of weaponry in December 2014 and June 2015 could not be located due to the sensitive nature of military purchases and the associated risk involved in the procurement and transshipment of those items. It would have been prudent of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force to procure its own items so as to limit its armory exposure in the public realm or utilize the company used on previous occasions to procure such items. Since the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has its own procurement procedures through its commissary, through its commissary, and has an officer that brokers such purchases, internal procurement measures could have been considered in procuring these items. Utilizing the services of a home-based company over an established company that has been used by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force in past purchases poses probable security risks. A newly reactivated home-based company could not have proven that it was financially sound enough to procure items without upfront assistance from the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. That is, preparing for the intended items. As all items imported by this company into the country could not be determined through the customs entries to substantiate whether the Royal Bahamas Defense Force was in direct receipt of all weaponry orders. This in itself poses a threat to the safety and security of our borders. The Auditor General recommended that the Royal Bahamas Defense Force stop securing its military products from home-based businesses. If a business that is procuring military items in the amount of $1.3 million can only order through online purchasing and is not allowed to store inventory, this business would be unable to prove that these military items were inspected, tested, and delivered as anticipated due to the stipulations around its license. The report said, procuring goods from a business that is new to the market of selling military items and is home base uh, presents a significant exposure and security risk to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force as the business was not licensed on the basis of bringing ammunition, guns, and other weaponry into the country. This is a very serious finding of the Auditor General as it relates to the fact that the custom of the Bahamas could not give an accounting of many of the entries of these weapons into the country. We are beginning to get a clear picture, therefore, that if this level of slackness is taking place, then I want to invite the public to recognize 
that the first sign of corruption is slackness. Remember that. The first sign of corruption is slackness. Because if, if you are slack, you are corrupt. And from slackness to corruption, that's the first sign. And then after corruption, it's gangsterism. And that is what it, these allegations amount to. And what the Parliament of the Bahamas ought to do immediately is to appoint a Blue Ribbon Royal Commission of Inquiry with the commission having the powers to send for people, officers, documents, and to sit from sit, and, and to sit from place to place with a view of determining what happened to all those weapons. No wonder everybody seems to have an AK-47. No wonder everybody seems to have a high-powered gun. No wonder bullets is all over the place. Because here is a clear example of what I call military slackness. What's going on here? Huh? What is going on here? And this is serious because we are faced with serious problems with crime, with murder. And my God, you could bring in all them guns and nobody know where the gun is? Nobody know? Ah, oh boy, y'all Negroes, this is a banana republic. All of y'all is banana. That's what y'all is. Dr. Menes is the prime minister of the banana. And it is my hope that one day when the banana peel falls on the ground, somebody will slip on it and, I don't know, I shouldn't say broke the crown. That is unkind. Lord, forgive me for saying these unkind things because it's not kind. Oh, my spiritual advisor, so, red flag. Yeah, sound like we're in trouble. Over Royal Bahamas Defense mm -hmm. Force weapons. The implications are far reaching, my friend. Just listening to that article, it, it, it's a serious issue, you know, and it sends shockwaves, I hope, throughout the country to get people to understand that we have some things going on in this country that needs to be investigated. So, now, where do we go from here? It seems as if the Royal Bahamas Defense Force is going to have to have a commission of inquiry. All right, you have two invoices that customs say they can't find that represents these weapons. But you know, it would be interesting to find out what did those shipments uh, consist of? How many weapons were involved in the two shipments that they can't find? You know, all, this, all these are questions that, you know, have to be asked. Were they bullets? Were they guns? What type of guns were they? You know, it's serious, Mr. Monica. Now I think we may uh, have an answer to how all of these weapons actually get on the streets and into the wrong hands. You know, um, the government needs to move swiftly with this and try to resolve this because um, we almost have a Taliban situation at hand. We don't know who is behind all this, who on the inside doing the workings, uh, uh, who may be supplying certain uh, interest groups with, with weapons. Yeah, it's just all kind of questions. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to get into it because there's a bunch of things going through my mind right now as to how this could be happening in our country. And uh, the fact it would have on us in the next couple of years, who knows? Next couple of years, my we, spiritual yeah, advisor, we, the we, effect that it, is taking is place now, now. But we're looking at, we may have an interest group who could possibly take this country over because we don't know where these weapons are going. Well, uh, who, what kind of group are you talking about? Uh, you mean the defense force? No. Let me tell you, you something. You know what you're talking about. Well, let me give you a story. All right? One day, at the defense force, mm -hmm. they carry out a high-level military operation mm -hmm. to which they attempted to catch the defense force sleeping and a group of other defense force officers mm -hmm. dressed like cuban commanders seize the defense force according to legend and some of the guards break off run towards life at key dive overboard and swim to nassau where they telephoned Basil Dean, the late Basil Dean and the CID, and praise the Lord, Basil Dean, Big Joe, Pickstock, and the CID 
spared into the defense force and rescued them. I'm not afraid of the defense force as long as Basil Dane and the boys are. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom Match, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker. My spiritual advisor is Bradley Roll. Bradley, how are I'm you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Senator. Who would have been the Commodore of the Defense Force? I think... Be the Commodore, acting Commodore. Between Mr. Bo and Tellus. What year is this? Uh, Whatever two, year it yeah, was... I think Remember that Tellus Bethel was acting Commodore for about two years. Well, Tellus Bethel and what, on what Mr. Bow name? Um, Y'all two? Is that, is that Roderick Bow? Roderick Bow. I think so. Y'all gonna have to come before me because I'm playing ombudsman. I can't count on the F and M to do its job because they're compromised and they're greedy. You see, I ain't compromised. Roderick Bow. Speak up. Let us know if you were in charge when all these weapons were purchased. And are they in the armory? I need to know that, Roderick. And to tell us, what tell us name? Bethel. Mr. Tellus Bethel. He is the now Commodore. You are the now Commodore. You might not be aware, but the PLP them told me how they didn't intend to name you as the Commodore. You ain't gonna do that. What you mean? I mustn't do that, my spiritual advisor. Yeah, why mean, you cut? Why I just don't want Why are you in? covering up? Listen, no, no, Miss Miss Monica, you're on to a very interesting story. Yes, I'm on to. I want right? him to know. But you, you don't but want me to tell him? No, don't. Okay, well you know, I can smear that in the man's face, man. Listen, I can tell you then. It's an honorable. The it's an honorable office he's holding. You know. Yes, but where are the guns? Yes, I and the bullets. That has. How okay. come customer don't know? Now, Roderick, Bell, and tell us, battle. Y'all gonna have to give us an accounting. Because don't forget what Hubert Ingram said, that these are the times for transparency and accountability. I either want the guns and the bullets or the money back. Because the money is the people's damn money. And what time is it? It's the people's time. So Roderick, you gotta issue a press statement so I could know. And Commander, Tell us battle. Commodore. Commodore. Tell us bet battle. I need to know. Do we have the armory at the place? I need to know. Because these Negroes ain't gonna ask. But I have to ask on behalf of the people them. I need to know. Issue a statement. Because this has serious implication for us to spend all this money and Nobody know where the thing them is. The bullets, the guns, and things like that. I am told, I have a caller. Because I am concerned over Frankie Campbell. I'm also concerned about a Negro man who defeated Dr. Perry Gomez. What is the name of the Negro man? Who defeated Dr. Perry Gomez? Which constituency? This is a North Andrus. I asked the Negro man to come clean. All right? Don't mind Minister in charge of the country. There is a day of reckoning for all who holds political power. I know that you are same thing to be waking with Frankie. There's some things that are happening in the marine, in the seas of the Bahamas, and the f &M is looking the other way. But I want y'all to know that I'm not, I'm the only f &M who ain't gonna look away. All right? Because nobody rubbed my pocket. Okay? Nobody rubbed my pocket. And within the party, corruptions are taking place. And so I need to ask, not Andres, member of parliament, I think he's a bow leg, 
Is he a bow leg? Yeah, he is bow leg, you know. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, Mr. I don't bow leg. Know his first name, but he is a bow leg. Are you able to go to Chub Key? Are you able to go to Chub Key? And if you say that you are able to go to Chub Key, tell me why. And if you can't go to Chub Key, you know I'm on radio, TV. Then you will have to tell me why you cannot go. <laughs> All right? So you call me back at 6 o'clock, okay? That's important. What is taking place at Chub Key? I ask the security and intelligence branch of the Royal Bahamas Police Force to go visit Chub Key. Something Fishy is taking place at Chop Key. Is it Chop Key? Let me look at my notes. What is the government doing and is allowing to happen on some of these private islands? What's going on? What is going on? I'm in possession of highly confidential material. And I asked the commissioner of police, send police over there. Go look. See what they're doing. All right? I am also concerned about Staniel Key. Something fishy is taking place. And I want to know why it is happening. I want to know why that the government is not keeping their eyes on something that is unsavory taking place. I want you all to stop it, you know. Just because we're black don't mean all of us are stupid. Now, there's a lot of stupid black people in the country. Those who allow you all to go on them islands and do things that is not proper, I want you all to stop it. You hear me? Because I'm prepared to rent a boat and come down with some of my boys to defend these islands against the crooks who are inhabiting these islands and they are getting away with impunity I want you all to stop it man stop taking advantage of us and you all go home to America which is a no good self go home violating all our laws and these stupid black people God forgive me for calling my people stupid. But we are stupid. Just allowing these people to do all kinds of things. Huh? I got it, you know. Y'all can't do nothing wrong here and the people them don't tell me. Huh? Because they know that in the FNM, there's only two of us who clean. Papa clean and I clean. <laughs> only two of us. Papa's clean. Papa, do you know they're doing skullduggery, Papa. Papa! They're doing all kind of foolishness, Papa. They're running a game on custom, Papa. Papa, there is no accountability down there. No transparency. And Papa, they're tricking Boleg. Papa, they're running cycle around Boleg. And Boleg hardly could go there, Papa. Papa, man, speak for us. Because menace. Say where you put man. I want y'all to stop it, man. If y'all want to do something bad, go in the States and do it. Where the US government could lock y'all up. Because here in the Bahamas, all y'all gotta do is tip us. And once y'all tip us, we we'll look away. A bunch of stupid Negroes allowing these foolishness to happen. Lord, I should have had a group. I would have sailed. You know if the mailboats Let's go to some of these keys. Uh, no, I don't know. I need I, a mail boat. You don't have to take a private vessel. Let there. me see what all they have been doing. My lines are full? Yeah, take some calls, man. Man, the FNM always has stopped me when I'm about to drop the bombshell. But I got weak. Take some calls. Let me see and that. Y'all better be careful because I hear Sabas them can soon have radio. Let me take a look at that. Sabats have a boat? Really? <laughs> I wonder if Sabats <laughs> would lend me that boat. His boat. <laughs> Is it big? <laughs> Can it hold about 10 men from Black Village? 
I'm going to deputize them, and I'm going to, I'm going to capture it. I'm going to capture it. Chop key. Chop key, I know what you're doing, you know. And ain't nobody give me nothing. How, if, if we can have bribery, then bribe everybody. <laughs> See, if we can do bribery, you can't bribe one Negro. If you're going to bribe, <laughs> then bribe everybody. You know? Uh, bribe Negro uh, number one. I tell you. Can't you also give Negro number two, three, four, and five? Goodness of my seat. Lord, in the morning, let's take the phone call because all I got, see all these things I got? I got BEC. I'm talking about BEC. I was there today and they treated me well. To the woman, them, in the cashless cage at BEC, I salute y'all. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Hello? 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 What, what happened Hello? to the people? Hello? He's there. Hello? How are you? Yes, that's Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama? It's yes, you, I heard you talking about Chubkey. Yeah. I want to talk to you private about a situation about Chubkey. You know little things happening down there? As you mean, I know the I, I know the big yacht was parked up and, yes. and some, some big time government officials was there visiting them people them. Yes, sir. You got the right intelligence. I have the satellite photograph. And, and I can tell you where this is. Go where ahead. Happened. Yes. I don't want to because I saw the boat and I saw the big time officials them. That's right. I ain't calling nobody name. Don't call their name. And you see how they have such a strong appetite? <laughs> Man, they can eat. They're just like pigs. Y'all have to be proud. All right? Stop eating the white man food. They come to if the sell, If y'all can sell the country, my God, it can't be for a plate of food unless it's for all of us. Yeah, they come to collect. I know. But I want y'all to stop it because the United States government can see y'all from space. You better stop it. Stop it, man. <laughs> America can see. They can see. They come, they come in a big hundred, hundred north for the yard. Boy, oh boy, wow. you got the same intelligence, eh? <laughs> this is powerful. You Don't got, call no name, eh? You got any photographs? No, I ain't call no name. Don't call no name. You have any photographs? And everybody was a Negro, right? No, I ain't call no name. Don't call no name. I thank you, eh? All right, sir. And if you see anything, send me a coded message. Ezekiel okay. is swimming oh, outside the shop key. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hello. To, yes. How are you doing, my senator? Listen, I'm so stressed. They're selling us out for one plate of food. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Talk I'm to so me. I'm so happy to hear from you, senator. I thank you. And you your spiritual advisor. Good afternoon. How you doing? It's it, um, just great, and um, here in the Ponderosa called the Sweet Tea Ponderosa. Okay. Uh, what I'm calling on behalf of, I'm, I'm happy to watch your show every 4 o'clock in the, in the day. You're a good man. And, and Until 6 o'clock in the evening. And then Sabats play it every morning from yes, 8 to 10. Yes, and I watched that too because I was paralyzed for five years. Oh, wow. Jesus. My name is... Dr. Dexter Sweetie Thompson, the son of the great late Sweet Richard. I've been paralyzed uh, five years in, in, in the Ponderosa, and now this is the time of the, of the fest of Junkano. Yes. I've been at Junkano for 58 years. You're coming out this Junkano? I, would, I hope that, that the, the world will see me. Not, you know, not you know I have a Junkano group, eh? Yeah, but I'm, what I'm calling on behalf of that I want to let the people know in this country that I'm still living because back in yesteryear, in the 60s, in Nassau Street Super Value, I hired a lot of young children back at the age of eight. Yes. And I, the, 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 the day right now as I speak, they are controlling this country right now. But where is Sweetie right now that nobody knows where he is? My number is 394-2902-558-4000 and 805-1933 and... Mr. Senator, I'm happy to watch you every day because I thank you, you are a, a mentor to me and the spiritual advisor also a mentor because I'm in the room 
24 hours. So wow. I need someone to call me and to help me to, to overcome my, my, my situation. Re repeat my your healing. number again. And, 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 and repeat your, your number again. When I, when I got on the show and I understand what was happening, you all made my life better than how it is today because I watch you and I listen to you. And I spoke to the spiritual advisor and also the senator or offline and let them know that I'm with, in the jungle for 58 years. Wow. And not one jungle will come and see me right now. Oh, yes, I, I speak remember. to you Do all you right now. And I want all the jungles to come Smitty. and see me right now as I speak to you and just come and hail me or call me because all the years of my life, my father, the great late Sweet Richard in 1947, when he started the jungle on Bay Street, he was a man, he was a mentor for all the jungles. Even Wall of Francis, he lifted him up at, at, at the age of four and brought him on Bay Street. And, and that's Wall of come to see you. They, they take the they, they take the crown from Sweet Richard and give it to Wall of Francis. Wow! Listen, give wow. us your number one more time so that I may call on women all around the world, all around the Bahamas, to give you a call. Yeah, give repeat number your numbers. Yet. Three nine four. Uh -huh. Two nine zero two, yes. Five five eight four thousand. Okay. Eight zero five nineteen thirty three, and all my uh, employees back in the sixties that I made them who they are today, and made them this they controlling this country right now, in nineteen sixty. Listen, because I sweetie, uniforms I'm going to the gonna ask register. all the women them to call you, okay? And I'm the, I'm, I'm the man them. Wow. And I want God. God is in control because I was paralyzed for five years and he lifted me back up and I be able to I walk again. Tell the woman God, I want God. the world to know that I'm still living, I'm not dead, and I, I, this is a time of the season of great joy and happiness. I should tell the woman Absolutely. that God is worthy to be praised. Absolutely. Let, let, let us continue take to thank care. God because if take you go to Acts chapter 3, verse 12, he speaks that when the lame man was at the gate of the temple, yes, for 40 years. He, he, he touched John and Peter was there, uh -huh. and he touched the I will lame, tell the woman them to call, call you, Speedy, I got to let you go. go. Uh, to all the women them around the Bahamas, spiritual advisor, Tell them to call 805-1933. 805-1933. Oh, call 558-8000. He's a light-skinned Negro. 805-1933. His father was one of the greatest Junkanua in the history of the country. He's been paralyzed. He's been confined to a room. Butler Francis wouldn't go check him. And Fast Eddie wouldn't. If you all know Butler Francis, Waller Francis and Fast Eddie, tell them, I say, go check that man. And all y'all women... You all call him and let him know how much you all love about and him. appreciate him. Absolutely. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Answer me. Hello. Speak to me. Next caller. Hello, welcome. Hello. To yes. Rodney, can I give two kudos to some good people, please? Go ahead, my brother. Firstly, I will give kudos to my wife, who will celebrate 31 years of marriage. This is powerful. Her name is Joanne Marie Sweeting Smith. That's your wife? Yes, sir. Joanne is a safe woman. Go ahead. She, Monka, she is a good woman. To I put know. up with Patrick A. Smith for 31 years. Well, he's a good man. Now, the second one, Mr. Monka. Yes. I will give kudos to Mr. Anthony Ferguson, the new commissioner of police. police. Mm. He's your cousin? No, sir. He's a good man, too. Go ahead. Yeah, he joined the force in 1980, the 21st of November. Wow. Okay. I predicted that he would have been the next commissioner of police. Were you right? Yes, sir, because he is my squad mate. Okay. This is powerful. And he has been humble, and he was a good man from training time, and I hope that he stay humble and keep the Bahamas safe. This is powerful. The next one is Rodney, all those officers. Yes, who in the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, who assisted that home base business, should have to resign immediately if that is confirmed. That is unacceptable what happened to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. And it must be investigated. Absolutely. God save the Queen. Hello, Absolutely. welcome to Freedom March. Now, I was telling you, how the member of parliament
for North Andres. Don't mind his MP. The foreigners has banned him from coming on the island. Can you imagine that? I am a member of parliament in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and a foreigner could prevent me from coming on the island? The last time someone attempted that, I think, was on the late Norman Solomon. If I'm correct, it must have been in the year 1979 when Norman Solomon was on his yacht in the Exumas when he decided, based on information that was provided to him, that Carlos Joe Leader, a man whom the Americans say was a drug smuggler, was on Norman's key. And the late Norman Solomon, who was a member of parliament, swarmed on to Norman's key. And Joe Leader and the criminals who occupied it unleashed dogs on Norman Solomon. And Norman Solomon returned to the parliament and exposed it. And a series of chain effects took place, culminating by 1983-84 into a commission of inquiry. I call on Bolek. You are an Androsian. You are a Bohemian. You are a member of the parliament. No one, no one should be able to stop a member of parliament on going on any island in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, even if the island is privately owned. Because you are one of the elected representatives <coughs> of the people them. By grab, I want you to stand strong. All right? Because I have the dossier, you know. All over, Bahamians are telling me and is bringing information. And I'm disturbed. You are Boleg. That's only your surname. Your surname is Boleg. But you ain't Boleg. You stand straight and stand strong. And go and tell the government what is going on. And give you a chance. Because you is F and M. And I is F and M. But I got the thing I'm here. All right? And I don't like what is going on. And I want that Texas man to behave himself or go back to Texas. And I ask the immigration to stop pussyfooting. I ask Brent Seminet to defend the sovereignty of this country. And I want the government, this FNM government, to release the heads of agreement for Chop Key, if there exists one, and Staniel Key, where they are running amok and importing foreign workers to the detriment of Bahamians who could do the job and are unemployed. You all bunch of black people. I hate to say it, you didn't deserve independence because you all don't know how to defend the sovereignty of the country and how to be proud and black. All the bull scared I have to put up with. Huh? Come on, Brent Simonet, I expect better, all right? Do not compromise the sovereignty. If these people are not entitled to work permit, I don't want no work permit to be backdated. Don't do that. No work permit is to be backdated. No work permit is to be retroactive. What kind of stupidness this is? Huh? What kind of stupidness this is? Huh? What kind of stupidness this is? How is it that we could be dredging in Stanley Creek and the people show up in the morning and dredge and leave the country. That's the intelligence that I have. And I accept the intelligence that I have. I want you all to be proud. Brent, I expect better out of you. All right? You know menace is mediocre. You know that, Brent. You know it. You know it's a mediocre government, Brent. Papa done train you. At least you should be there and help to guide and defend the sovereignty of the country. Sovereignty is being compromised under the watch of the FNM. But I thank God for Jesus that there are brave Bohemians, brave Bohemians who are coming forward and is providing it 
Frankie, I want you to stop it, eh? Because if you don't stop it, you can cost me to put on full speed as I go to court to remove you because you ain't defending the sovereignty of the Bahamas. All kind of skullduggery is happening under your ministry, but I is effing up. Do you have something to say to the senator? Call Freedom March at 323-7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242-300-0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monker, only on ILTV. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back. The Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker. My spiritual advisor is Bradley Roll. As I jump from issues to issues, you might not be aware of it. National security is threatened and compromised when a government allows foreign investors to take over a whole island and they do as they wish. They could bring their wife in as nurse, but there's no evidence of work permit or nursing license. They can fire and they can even keep worthless members of parliament off the island. Something that should never happen because the members of parliament are the guardians of the sovereignty of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Before I take the call, I want to go back to another piece of pressing information that has been revealed by the Auditor General, Terence Bastian, once again involving the Bahamas Defense Force. Do you know they had three people working in the Defense Force, but they were imaginary people? Can you imagine that? I would now know. If the Defense Force officers that I run into, if they are the real thing or not. Because they may be imposters. Since we have uncovered that at least three names were on the payroll that don't exist. And then of course we find that recruits have been ripped off. They have robbed the recruits by $600. I want to know who received the $600, all right? This is what is happening when slackness is allowed to permeate your nation. What kind of foolishness is, all right? I always felt that as we arm the defense force, we should also equally arm the police force. And then we should also set up the people's militia. I call on the government in view of this serious allegation that we should set up a people's militia because this here is nonsense all right can you imagine they had fictitious employees now when i run into the defense force they can get upset when i say to them you're a real defense force officer you, you, you can imagine that they're going to be insulted but now we're having these serious matters. And these constitute what I call national security threats. And guess who is the chairman of the National Security Council? Goodness of me, of my see, Dr. Minnis. Anyway, I'm going to take a call. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hey, Mr. Monka. Hello, my dear. Hey, spiritual advisor. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. Great. Ms. Monica, I'm going to say one thing. Rick, this country is going to hell in a handbasket. Wow. We're going back to how we were in the 50s. Wow. You know why they causing Island Luck to close all the banks? Why? They're going to be a monopoly. Already we see Commonwealth Bank move in on Spanish well when Royal Bank closed there. Watch how they can move into all of the islands and charge... The Bahamian people, these outrageous bank fees. They don't want the black people to get none. In the 50s, when you were sponging, my daddy saying if the boat sank in a certain part of the island, you had to swim 
to the market dock. You couldn't get off. Wow. If the foreigners telling the prime minister you can't come to Albany, you think they care about any bow leg and chub key? No. And right in Nassau, the prime minister can't go to Albany unless he call them. They tell him leave him alone. Yeah, you're so right. So this is where we had it. You see it? Yeah. As it was in the beginning, so uh, should it be in the end if somebody don't put a stop to it. If they have no respect for the prime minister, they got any respect for any little minister, but even a uh, MP, but even a minister. Well, we I have to lead from the head. If the head they ain't got no respect for the head, they ain't got none for the tail. You are so right because oh. I, I'm told that they have given Boleg a new Boleg. Take yeah. it care, my love. You are a okay. wonderful woman. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Hello. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Hello, my dear. How are you doing? Listen, I'm struggling. Okay, and good evening to the spiritual advisor. Yes, good evening to you too. Uh, Mr. Monk, I heard the uh, Minister of National Security in an update and sound like he differed from the report. Very interesting. Um, what did you hear? Him. What did he say? Hmm? What did you hear? No, when, he, when the report talked about the hiring and the thing about the Defense Force officers, right. uh -huh. listen to his response. He differ, sort of differ from that report. Really? He, uh, is he, are you suggesting yes. that he went contrary? Marvin, now don't do nothing out the way, eh? Because your daddy ain't after case that, may, that might just be a report that was just released. She says it's different from what's been reported in the Guardian, so... If you'd like to make a call, uh, please cool. hang up and try again. Okay. If Do I have anybody else on the phone? No? Huh? Well, we're saying in the newspaper, the Tribune, whom Philip Brave Davis told the Parliament, maligned him, if you now look, the Tribune say, Brave told Miller, halt brother's deal. You see? And where's the Nassau Guardian? Well, the Nassau Guardian ain't got it in big headline, but they say that Bannister apologized. And then, of course, the Bahama Journal say, Works Minister apologize for audit. We should take the audit and just tear it up. Huh? The FNM must stop the crookedness, man. You didn't have to hide the, the letter that Philip Brave Davis sent to Leslie Miller. And, 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 and also sent to, to BEC. You mustn't do that, man. Let's run an honest country because we are all citizens and we are all related. You want to see my first cousin, married Marvin Dame's sister, and all she having is monkers for us. So you see, the country is small. I have two of the women them on the phone. Hello. Are you one of the women them? Always. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God that thousands of women are joining me in this powerful revolution. What's on your mind, my love? Yes, I'm calling. I'd like to um, wish my daughter a belated happy birthday. What's she was name? 13 on Tuesday. She, uh, she's already 13? She was 13 on Tuesday, but we couldn't get through. We listen to you every evening. She can't wait to come out of school. Is she one of the children then? Oh, yes, sir. Well, this is powerful. What's her name? Juanisha Simonet. Wow, it's a wonderful name. Juanisha Simonet. Yes. Your mother wishes to publicly uh -huh. wish you a happy birthday, and so do I and my spiritual advisor. Now, we want you to have manners. Listen to your mom. And when school out, go home quickly, okay? You're such a wonderful child. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Do I have any of the women them on the line? Hello. Hel Hello, my dear. Are you one of the women them? Yes, sir. This is powerful. What's on your mind, sister? Miss... Mr. Monka, yes, I was watching your show on yesterday. Yes. And when you were talking with the MPs and stuff. Yes. I live in the Fort Charlotte constituency. Yes. And we voted for Mark Humes. Okay. And nobody see Mark Humes yet. Goodness of mercy, Mark is hiding. You see? And where he's hiding, he need to come out because the people voted for him. You have to understand what is happening. Mark has discovered for the first time that he has no influence nor any power. So today, Minutes boarded him 
on Bahamas Air and flew him to Grand Bahama. So if Minnis has not arrived in New Providence, they are still in Grand Bahama and Mark is recognizing that what he taught that the FNM would have done, they're not doing it. They're just faxing up the nation, you see? But I shall tell you how to find him, okay? Do you know where his constituency office is? Yes, I live right around the corner. This is on Providence Avenue. I live right around the corner, Mr. Munker. You know where the big wash house is? Just go about 250 feet Yes, north. sir. When you get exactly 250 feet, turn east. And Ortland Buddy, his sister, old house. That's where his office is, okay? And let me know what he's doing. Because they are hiding, and as an f and I intend to help the constituents to flush them out. All right? You heard me, sister? Yes, sir, but that's wrong what they're doing to the people, sir. But I told you, you didn't listen to yes, me. Yes, sir. I said to y'all, if you can't vote PLP, let's go on the beach. Y'all woman too disobedient, man, and hard head. When you hear a serious man them talk to you, you must listen, okay? You hear what I say? Because yes, what, sir. What time is it? The, the people's time. What time is it? The people's time. I say, fox him. Take it care, my love. It's amazing. They're running. Even after. Ain't nobody pursuing them. When nobody pursues them, these men are running. They're nothing but a bunch of picky teeth, man, Toby. They're frying pan with black collie all over it. My spiritual advisor, how I sound? Making a lot of sense to me, Mr. Monker. Ah, uh, my spiritual advisor. You're such a wonderful man. <laughs> so... Do you have text Listen, to man, read? We read got some texts. We got over 200 texts, man. Cut this up, my C. Read text, because the people, them, has things right. on their mind. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Go uh, ahead. Gee, 209. Goodness. Uh, hot. Uh, Honorable Senator. God save the Queen. Um, what about the persons on the RBDF who were promoted and don't exist? Well, I want those imaginary soldiers to send the money back. That's all. Y'all you know you, you know y'all don't exist. Y'all know y'all are not real Defense Force officers. Please send the money back. Senator, do you realize that um, if the court declares that Frankie is not a Bahamian, even though he born before 73, we have a lot of persons born here before 73 to non Bahamians, and they are citizens. So you're saying that all of them are not Bahamians? No, 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 no. Please understand what Frankie's position is. Frankie cannot produce legitimate evidence to show that he was born in the Bahamas. Take it from me, he cannot prove that. His affidavit, which was written and signed before J.P. Willis um, Russell, is not sufficient evidence to prove he was born here. Okay? Take it from me, Frankie was not born in the Bahamas. And I now might be able to produce the gardener from the cemetery. So be careful, because payments are coming forward. All right? I was trying to get Frankie and Dr. Minister to do the honorable thing. I provided them with the solution. I described Frankie's problem as a Sinclair Oten syndrome. We've been through this in 1974. But you know what kind of man Minister is? Men is stubborn. Men is don't listen. And Frankie is his jack. And he can't believe that Frankie is going to be knocked out. But I want to say Frankie. I want to say Frankie. And the way to say Frankie is to get Frankie to resign now. And men is make him a citizen and run him again. But men is don't want to do that. Why? I suspect as I go off in the spirit from time to time. The last time I've been in the spirit, I met Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. The last uh, time boy, I, tell you. I went into the spirit, I met Minister. And Minister in the spirit world does not believe in the rule of law. In the spirit world. 
That's what's going on. Okay. So I am struggling. My spiritual advisor, when you go read text. Man, you won't let me read anything. Hurry up, Mr. man, because it's almost time. Um, for good, the evening. Show good evening, Mr. Monker. I would like to send a special birthday shout out to Robert Jennings from all of his kids. Robert Jennings? Robert Jennings from all of his kids. Robert Jennings! You're my chief general. Happy birthday! Listen, man. Happy birthday. And listen, find me. I'm going to buy you a nice cold apple cider. Because at your age. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Monica. What is going on in Baker's Bay? They are giving our custom officers and immigration officers cheeseburgers to close their eyes. Really? Uh, Y'all are closing your eyes for cheeseburger? <laughs> Y'all are prepared to go to jail for chase fighting? <laughs> Goodness of my seat. Listen, arrest those people, eh? Oh, Lord of my seat. Good day, oh. Mr. Monka. Uh, spiritual advisor. Cruise ship brought in almost 400 people in Berlin yesterday. Now I hear um, some Kanki Joe people don't want the poor people to make any money from oh, the no. business. Oh, no. Let me speak to the Kanki They Kanki don't people. want us to make that little thing, Mr. Monka. No, no. I'm going to speak to the Kanki Joe people. Now, Kanki Joe people, I want you to know that you have to share the economic pie with the Negroes. See, everybody got to live. This one Bahamas, you know. Let's play one Bahamas, okay? And share it. Because if you don't share it, it creates social problems, okay? So what I'm going to do is, the Conky Joe, you all take half. And the Negroes, give them the next half, okay? God is love, Mr. Monka, and spiritual advisor, good day. Mr. Monka, I think Mr. Elson Greenslade should also be questioned as well. How could this happen with these guns? Wow. But I still think this is a smoking screen. Mr. Monka Fox, ah, this country has a lot of problems. No jobs, crime is out of control. Uh, don't look away, Mr. Monka. A lot of these islands have foreigners working without papers. Where Bahamians can do these jobs? Why do we have labor board Invest Why don't we have the Labor Board investiga investigate Eleuthera, Mr. Monka? Monka, your girl, Lisa Johnson, is gone from U.S. Embassy by Grab. Lisa, I'm going to miss you, eh? Monka, how are you, sir? It's the people's time by Grab. This is powerful. Uh, good evening, Mr. Monka. Uh, we're in trouble. We have to start at the top. Read them all out. It can't just be for, for pay. Uh, Mr. Monka, you never... Uh, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. No uh, matter what they say, as long as it's uh, in so Okay, good evening, gentlemen. We're in trouble. We have to start at the top. Read them all out. You can't just uh, pay for the small man. But you never hear what happened to those that are in authority. We want to see change. Why vote the PLP out to get worse treatment god save us from destruction please before it's too late afternoon senator who is see them white people them when their bulbs dark at night mr michael this is your cousin you met at convention churchill tell an old son keep up the good works hopefully Listen. you get a chance to meet up again in the near future wow your great grand aunt and my grandma are sisters so we're close family on the carey side okay go ahead Mr. Monka, poor Brallanders will be denied an opportunity to make money as the Aguilar support billionaire second home owners protest some bar cruise ship. Uh, yes, so Rodney, you are right on about Chubb Key. Workers there are not allowed to bring their wives there to visit them. Workers are not allowed to patronize Solomon Bar, a Bohemian, or they will be fired. They are trying... Go ahead. They're trying to run Solomon off the island and take his land. This owner, George Bishop, a Texan, has extreme um, KKK mannerism. Bohemians are restricted to walk past the fuel dock. Yes, more eyes need to be on this place. They also have a GM, John Dahl, who was a salesman at Baker's Bay. Cut throating behemoths with the most vicious nest. Well, you didn't listen to me. I told you you couldn't depend on the F and M. You know what kind of Negroes these F and Ms are? They don't put people first. But we gotta change it. I'm gonna mm -hmm. find a boat, and I'm coming to Chop Key in the name of the sovereignty of the nation. 
Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Oh, uh, this uh, this one is a bit lengthy. Let me save that for the last. Good evening, Mr. Monka. Uh, what about the Campbellman situation? I the don't what? hear you speak. I don't know what they want about Frankie for. Um, oh, Frankie! I don't hear him, hear you speak about him anymore. Don't worry about Frankie, man. Frankie's straight, eh? Uh, Mr. Monka, um, only because the boss block they want shut the accounts down hog hard when someone is behind us well i want him to know that sabas is not completely black can't you say he come from white people um put up miles monroe picture because this is his death anniversary i think it was when in 2014 on november 9th that miles monroe um crashed with a number of people you. I was minded to talk about Miles Monroe, but I've changed my mind because if I talk about him, many of my Negro people who are not a part of the spiritual realm would not understand something that took place. So I'll leave it alone and perhaps take it up tomorrow. Um, Monka, I want you to call on all the people there who have suffered damages where they have been fired either a chop key or stanyel key um and so that they can come forward and defend or help themselves i want the job but i will not get it okay this one seems to be kind of confidential mr rule if the people of this if the people in this country be committed to God, the way they are committed to the PLP and FNM, you know how a blessed and rich country we'll have. Please pray for that change to come. Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. Ms. Cartwright is being set up to embarrass herself in public because she has never watched your show. So she didn't hear you say those things herself. And then Ms. Cartwright ought to be careful of me because um, usually when you hear me say something, I got my evidence hidden right but she says that her uncle couldn't speak Haitian Creole she doesn't know that I have witnesses her uncle spoke good Creole good Creole and that is why Frankie Dawes went to him see this was an accidental all right um, Willis spoke good Creole okay but I don't want to get any argument with Kendallin because um, it just happens that her mom and her granduncle played a significant role. And every Haitian at a certain age, they know if you want a good fix, you go to Villas because he was also an intellectual. Great men would meet with him, all the Randall Fox in them. See, they know I know these things. They got to be careful. I don't want to get. Plus, Willis also used to do little things, you know, little underhand works. She ain't know I know that. She don't know that I study Haitian voodoo. And Willis could do little things. Yeah. You had little problems? He only was JP now. He was a medicine man. Oh. There's a woman who had a whole snake growing in her belly. A whole snake. Sometimes the snake used to go up in her nose. And Willis do little things. By the time he came back from Haiti, with that special concoction, the snake came out of her. I don't want Gendlin to know. See, I know things. I don't want to know. He, he know how to do little things. It's a good Obia man. And I, I, I don't know. I don't want them. All right? Because when I went to visit the shop, a certain elderly woman told me I must rub down and pee. And I wasn't sure what she was talking about. So I said, when you say pee, what you mean? <laughs> when she said to me, go in that shop, you better rub down with pee. I said, what you mean when you say P? <laughs> <laughs> they better be careful. Be careful Lord because Willis. mama wanted me <laughs> to rub down in P. <laughs> and guess what? It was in young people P. 
Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah. Scary. Mama wanted me. <laughs> when I approached and I said to her, take me to Billy's place. She said, oh, now listen Lord. here now. He used to do things. <laughs> and for a second, I wasn't too sure. And the pee uh. that she wanted me to rub down in was not young people pee. But I didn't want to get into it because she ain't gonna believe it. Right? But Willis could do little things. You can imagine a whole snake. The people them hurt the woman. Hide her. Can you imagine that? And every time the snake would go up, go to her nose and shake. Man, this stuff for real. But Willis, he clear her. Gwendolyn don't know it. I don't know if you went to heaven. Oh, boy. We have some more texts. I guess we'll have to read them tomorrow. But tomorrow. You're coming to the end of the show, Mr. Listen. Marco. Tomorrow. Little things. Who knows? I may go into that history so that Gwendolyn could be proud of it. I we're recognize. Not in, we're not interested in voodoo, okay? We are not interested in voodoo. This uh, is a Christian nation. This, this is, I don't mean that, um, voodoo. This is Boca. What's the difference? Boca! Obia. Boca! Why are you translating? <laughs> Stop it. Boca! I see things. I hear things. I'll see you all tomorrow. Gendelin, let's laugh at ourselves. You was a Haitian, and I'm a Haitian. Once say I see, who say I see? The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved.